recently, I've been slowly covering the lore behind every character from The Binding of Isaac. And today is no different. We'll be talking about a few different characters in one video because all of their stories are so interwoven, it's really hard to separate them. We'll be talking about the Edgelord Eve, the ever-changing Eden, and the ever-so-wholesome mother, Lilith. After I explain their lore, I'll also be talking about all of their in-game unlocks and try to explain any references that I find. So sit back, drink your favorite communion wine, make sure you're eating your favorite wafers, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos on these topics. Now let's jump right in. Like all of my lore videos so far, most of what we'll be talking about is all detailed in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis details the creation of Earth and humanity as a whole. God creates the world in seven days, and on the seventh day, after creating the first human, Adam, God rests. It's important to note that Adam was made first, followed by Eve the first woman. In some stories, Lilith is actually the first woman, but she gets cancelled after not listening to Adam like she's supposed to, and turns into a demon instead. More on that later. Anyways, second time's the charm, in comes Eve. God apparently had to rip out one of Adam's ribs to make her, which if you think about it is really weird because God basically made the entire universe out of nothing, but needs a rib to make Eve. Although in recent interpretations, the word that is often translated has has been seen to also just refer to simply Adam's side. But that still doesn't really make any sense. Some modern theologians even argue that perhaps the rib actually refers to the baculum, which is a bone in the penis of most animals, but absent in humans for some reason. This is mainly supported by the fact that men and women have the same number of ribs. So this being some kind of explanation for men having less doesn't really make any sense. But I'm not here to discuss anatomy with you. God then created a paradise for Adam and Eve to live in. It was a beautiful place full of tons of plants and animals and everything the two lovebirds could have ever wanted. It was called the Garden of Eden. Basically, Adam and Eve were allowed to exist here peacefully and live happily forever under one condition. God had a special tree nearby that grew the forbidden fruit. This fruit is usually depicted as an apple, but honestly, it's never stated what it actually is. But basically, God said that as long as Adam and Eve kept their hands off of the fruit, they can live in this sick-ass paradise forever. And so can their kids and their kids' kids and so on. The Garden of Eden isn't described too heavily in the book of Genesis, but what we do know is that it had four rivers. Please forgive me if I butcher any of their pronunciations, I did not look this up beforehand because I thought it might be funny. Fizon, Gion, Hedekel, and Phyrat. The funny thing is, the last two of these rivers are real life rivers you can actually go to today. Hedekel is the modern river of Tigris, and Phyrat is the Euphrates River. Both of these rivers are located in the Middle East, both together known as the two great rivers. In fact, in fact, the ancient word for the region Mesopotamia literally translates to the land between the rivers. So if the Bible is to be believed, the Garden of Eden would probably have been somewhere near there. Moving on, the Garden of Eden was also said to have been guarded by a flaming sword. That sword prevented intruders or those who have sinned from entering. Scholars argue whether or not it's an actual flaming sword, or if the flaming sword is just a metaphor for something else. But a flaming sword is very badass, so that's what we're going with. Okay, to recap, you have this garden. It's epic. It's got animals, it's got trees, and other stuff. And you're basically allowed to do whatever the hell you want in it, as long as you don't eat from the one tree in the middle. Sounds like a pretty nice setup if you ask me. Now, Eve was not yet created when God first told Adam to not eat the fruit. But she does seem to be aware of the rule at the time. And just like Adam, she makes sure to steer clear of the fruit. But one day, while Eve was just wandering around, Around, a serpent walked up to her. See, back then, snakes had legs. So yes, he literally did walk up to her. Yet, most pictures online still depict the serpent without any legs. This serpent has been theorized to potentially be Judas or Azazel or even Lilith. But right now, we're not gonna dive into that. And that's because they're all theories and we already talked about Azazel. I'll talk about Judas in the future and we'll talk about Lilith later in this video. So anyway, the snake then starts talking to Eve. So in the book of Genesis, there isn't any specific dialogue between the snake and Eve. But we do get the gist of everything. The snake says, yo, why you always be listening to God and stuff? And Eve is like, I don't know, he seems cool. But the snake's like, if God is so cool, why doesn't he let you eat his secret tangerine? And Eve's like, huh, I don't know. 
Then the snake kind of smirked and was like, Hey, I dare you to eat the forbidden tangerine. No, I won't do it, Mr. Snake. But then the snake says, What if I double dog dare you? And now Eve knew that she had to do it. Also, she always did wonder why she was banned from eating the fruit to begin with. She thought, what's the harm? So she eats the fruit and in doing so commits the first sin. Eve then goes home and is like, babe, you've got to try this shit. It's so cool. I now know the difference between good and evil. And Adam's like, babe, that was the one thing we were not supposed to do. Wait. You say you gained the knowledge of good and evil? And then he also eats it. Yes, eating the fruit taught you the knowledge between good and evil. Before this, I guess nobody knew? And this is really to explain why humans are so special and understand things like that. The fruit also made them realize that they were naked, I guess, so they covered up. So naturally, God is pissed. As this was literally the one thing they were not supposed to do. So he decides to pass judgment on everyone involved. First, he punishes the snake and takes away his legs, so now the snake has to slither. Then, he curses Eve and all the women forever to have periods and super painful childbirths. And women now also get less rights than their husbands. Adam is really just kind of slapped on the wrist. Yeah, this is as sexist as it sounds. Then, because they have sinned and now know the difference between good and evil, they are banished from the Garden of Eden forever, and they will no longer just be handed everything they needed. So that's basically the story of Eden and Eve and Adam. Adam and Eve went on to have three children, but we'll talk about them in a future video. Adam went on to live 930 years old. It is not mentioned how long Eve lived, but there's one person missing from the story so far, Lilith. When translated from the original Hebrew, Lilith actually has a ton of meanings. None of them good. Lilith can mean night monster, creature of the night, night hag, or even screech owl. One is not like the other. So Lilith is kind of complicated because she's not really formally recognized by everyone and is really only canon in the sense that she is a demon that exists. She is mentioned exactly once in the Hebrew Bible regarding a prophecy talking about the downfall of the kingdom of Edom. In some circles of Jewish folklore, she is seen as the actual first wife of Adam. Unlike Eve, Lilith and Adam were both sculpted out of clay at the same time, but Lilith was really aggressive and pushed back against her husband a lot. And according to Isaac ben Jacob, al Fasi Ha Cohen, it's a very long name I know, a Hebrew scholar from medieval Algeria, Lilith was so sick of having to follow Adam's orders that she willingly left the Garden of Eden and sleeps with the archangel Samuel. After that, there's really not that much info on her. She shows up from time to time listed as a prominent demon of hell and would sometimes be called upon in Jewish spell books or would appear in demonologist lists. Demonologist lists? Are, are the two hardest words to say back to back. There's mention that she escaped Eden to have intercourse with demons in the underworld, in particular with the devil himself. Legends say she's a demon of the night with a habit of stealing, eating, or giving diseases to babies, and being super horny all the time. I can relate to one of those things. There's also plenty of old texts that talk about Lilith having a lot of kids, but it's never a happy story with them to say the least. We really could dive into all of this if we really wanted to, but so much of it is either so vague, not considered canon, or just comes from a bad source, so I don't really think it's worth getting into right now. But whether she's considered canon or not, she is pretty relevant to the story of Eve in the Garden of Eden. So that's why I wanted to mention all three of them together. So let's now talk about all of the biblical references to them in game and try our best to explain all of their unlocks. Let's start with Eve. So why does Eve look the way she does? Well, she is the first sinner, so it's not crazy to depict her as a stereotypical emo child. In the original game, when entering a room, Eve will leave a blood stain instead of a pee stain. This is a direct reference to the fact that Eve, along with all women, were cursed by God to menstruate once a month due to Eve eating the forbidden fruit. Moving on to her starting items, unlockables, and achievements, the razor blade and dull razor are probably just more references to her edginess. Babylon the Great, commonly known as the Whore of Babylon, 
Babylon refers to both a symbolic female figure and place of evil mentioned in the Book of Revelations in the Bible, which explains the two items, Whore of Babylon and Whore Baby. The Book of Revelation isn't an Eve unlock, but I'll explain it since it was just mentioned. It's the final book of the New Testament. It's mostly about the apocalypse, rapture, and war. Dead Bird, Eve's Birdfoot, Black Feather, Crow Baby and Crow Heart are a reference to an old series of comics Edmund McMillan drew called Thicker Than Water. In it, the dead bird is said to represent his inner doubts and self-destructive nature. This also reminds me of the bird from the Apocalypse of Abraham, which was just a bird that tried to trick Abraham into thinking an angel was a demon despite the bird being a demon itself. The same could probably be said about Birdcage, but this item may also just be a pun based around the boss, Cage. Eve's mascara and black lipstick are both makeup which is commonly associated with women. Which makes sense seeing as Eve is the original woman and represents womankind as a whole. Sacrificial dagger is most likely a reference to the dagger that Isaac's father Abraham tried to kill him with. Athame, Adame, whatever you want to call it. It's a black handled knife that appears in certain versions of the Key of Solomon, which is a grimoire originating in the Middle Ages. It's probably given to Eve in specific as an unlockable because it activates when damage is taken, similar to her other gimmicks. I'm not sure of the exact meaning behind Cracked Orb. This as well may just be another unlock for her because it activates when you take damage. The Curdled is an achievement for unlocking Tainted Eve, which means separate or cause to separate into curds or lumps, which at first sounds like nonsense, but it does explain Tainted Eve's blood clots. Now let's talk about Tainted Eve's unlocks. The Reverse Emperor's Tarot card represents light and truth, a fairly direct reference to the forbidden fruit that Eve herself ate, which allowed her to learn the difference between good and evil, light and dark. Strange Key is likely a reference to the film by David Lynch, Mulholland Drive, where a small blue box being unlocked by Strange Key is a major plot point. Heartbreak, Lil Clots, and Soul of Eve are probably all as straightforward as they sound. And finally, Sumptorium is a metal drinking straw used in the Roman Rite to receive the blood of Christ in Holy Communion. Let's move on to Eden. According to Edmund, Eden is neither male nor female, but simply is. Which leads me to believe Eden represents humans as a whole, prior to eating the forbidden fruit and committing the original sin. Something that is interesting, however, is the fact that Eden is only unlocked after completing the womb, which could represent the act of eating the forbidden fruit itself, seeing as Eve's punishment was to be the one who has to go through childbirth. But more likely than that, I'd guess this is just a reference to how Eden essentially is a new character every time you play as them. So in other words, a new Eden is born from the womb every time. Let's talk about their unlocks. I don't think any of them are 2D, to start, there's a bunch of glitch-themed items. Undefined is a reference to a bug and the original Binding of Isaac that would occur when you deplete a room's item pool. GB Bug and the M Trinket both look similar to Missing No, which is a famous Pokemon glitch. And then there's Glitch Baby, who is Glitch Baby. There's then the mystery-themed items. Book of Secrets may be a reference to an Apocryphon, or secret book. The term is used to refer to early Christian writings that were written to teach secret knowledge that wasn't allowed to be publicly taught. Then there's mysterious paper and mystery sack, which I think are as mysterious as they sound. Then there's the new themed items. Eden's Blessing, which gives you a new item on your next run. Eden's Soul, that gives you two new items. Everything Jar, that gives you a new consumable. Metronome, that grants a random effect for the current room. It's also a Pokemon reference, I guess. And Blank Card, copies a pre-existing card that you already have. There's then Yellow Baby and Cracked Baby. I don't think there's much to these two. The Capricious, is the achievement which unlocks Tainted Eden. Capricious means to be given sudden and uncountable changes of mood or behavior. I'm sure we can all figure out why that's fitting. For the unlocks, you again have your glitched category. There's Corrupt Data, and then there's TM Trainer, which is another Pokemon reference. There's also the new category again, but more specifically, you could call this the Mimic category. Mold and Clay mimics a passive item from the current room's item pool. This item is also referenced in Four Souls, and it may be a reference to Slay the Spire. 
fire. The wiki also says this could be a clay model of Super Meat Boy, but I have no idea what they're talking about because this literally just does not look like Meat Boy to me. Soul of Eden gives you a D6 and D20 with the chaos effect. Wild card is an obvious Uno reference which copies the effect of the most recent card, pill, rune, soul stone, or activated item. Then there's the reverse world card which creates a new crawl space. And finally we have nuh uh. I have no idea if there's any meaning behind it. Last but not least we have Lilith. Many of Lilith's achievements have a focus around children and fetuses, which adds up considering she has a lot of stories of her involving having children, eating them, or what have you. Succubus and Incubus both refer to specific types of sex demons, often associated with Lilith due to her own sexual nature. In mythology, a Cambian is the offspring of a human and an Incubus or Succubus, which explains Cambian conception. Immaculate conception refers to the Catholic teaching that the concept of the Virgin Mary was freed from original sin. The Box of Friends seems to resemble the Lamegton configuration of Hellraiser, which is very, very fitting since solving the Lamegton configuration is how you summon demons, just like the Box of Friends. If you want to call Brother Bobby a demon, that is. Demons to some, <laughs> angels to others. Serpent's Kiss is most likely referencing Viper from Marvel Comics, who has has green lipstick and has transmitted poison through hollow fangs or poison lipstick before. Duality looks to resemble yin and yang, which is essentially a balance of good and evil. Euthanasia is the act of putting down a person or an animal to end their pain and suffering. A c-section is a surgical procedure by which a baby is delivered through an incision in the mother's abdomen. Rune bag, dark baby, Big Baby and Goathead are probably all just what they sound like. And Blood Puppy is a good boy. The Harlot is the achievement for unlocking Tainted Lilith. Harlot means prostitute, which at first might sound like it would fit better with Magdalene, given her false reputation of being a prostitute, but it still makes perfect sense with Lilith. The reversed High Priestess in their traditional deck represents passion, strong emotions, and individuality, which are all traits the biblical Lilith had, as she rejected God's plan for her and decided to leave Eden and sleep with demons instead. There's Twisted Pear, whose name is a reference to Neil Breen's film of the same name. Jello is implied to be a fetal incubus, and is a revenant in Greek mythology who causes infertility, miscarriages, and infant mortality. Adoption Papers are adoption papers. Soul of Lilith and the twins should be obvious. And finally, Fool's Gold is based off a mineral that can easily be mistaken for gold. There you go, that's the breakdown on Eve, Eden, and Lilith in the Bible and any references that I found. If there's anything that I might have missed, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, let me know who you want me to cover next, and subscribe so you don't miss it. That's all I got, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a happy Tuesday.